Hi, uh, my name is Terry. I'm an English teacher. I'm also a linguist and I am from a small town in Ireland called Donegal. Uh, I became a teacher almost by accident, you know. When I was a student in high school, I was so lazy. So I didn't go to university. Uh, I went to start to work in a hotel, in a local hotel. And I was one Irish guy with eight Brazilians and the job was so boring and I became such great friends with Brazilians. I started just to help them understand English at work. And it started just for fun, just helping my friends. And then later I became interested in languages and it became a career, you know. I've been teaching people since I was 16. Like the first time I started teaching a person was when I was working with the Brazilians and I started to help them to understand some basic ideas. Um, when I was in university, I started to teach people for free because I just wanted experience and I wanted to get started. And then after university, um, I did a qualification, the CELTA teacher training course, and I got my first job one week later in a language school in Dublin. And I remember in the interview, the, the director told me, you know, at this school, it's like 90% Brazilians. And I was like, okay, where do I sign? <laughs> Teaching is important for me because I am a linguist first. I really love languages, you know, and I know most people want and need languages for their job, for their professional life. But there really is nothing, no substitute for the satisfaction you can feel. Like, I know it's hard work, but when, when you do it, when you pass a job interview in a different language or have a complete conversation in a different language, it's a real feeling of satisfaction. So when I'm teaching or working with students, I'm always thinking about this. Like, this is the objective. Like, I want them to feel that same super positive sensation of learning, you know. But also because I am a linguist and I am good at languages, I feel a little responsibility to, to show people what I have learned. And because I am a dedicated linguist, but a lot of people are not. Uh, they are professionals who just need uh, good materials to learn quickly in the limited time they have, you know. So teaching is really important for me because it's really about helping people, helping people communicate helping them achieve, do this difficult thing, which is learn English and help them achieve that, you know. And when I get good reviews or good feedback from students, it's, it's priceless, you know, it's like gold, you know. I started to learn languages when I was pretty young. You know, I learned my first words when I was eight or nine, when I was on holiday with my, with my parents in Portugal. I just learned the basics. I just learned like, you know, hello, uh, thank you and please out there. But I, 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 it was a little tourist book I found in the apartment. I started to learn basic words. I started to practice the words in the street, and I never forgot the like really positive reaction people had with me. You know, I was like, wow, I remembered it. Um, later in life, in high school, when I was 12 or 13, I had my first French class with a with a teacher. You know, in school, and it was like a revelation. It was like, wow, it was like. Ching, like, yeah, that's what I want to do. Like, that's incredible. That's, that's, that's really what I want to do, you know? And I was always good at French in high school, but after high school, I, I didn't really do much with it, you know? But I basically failed my high school, and I started to work with Brazilians in the hotel. And I was the only Irish guy, and I was really, really bored, and I started to learn Portuguese, you know? Um, well, a really big moment in me becoming interested in languages was when I went to a big uh, rock festival in Belgium. It's called Grass Pop. It's like 30,000 people. It's a rock metal festival. And I met this guy from Belgium called Sven, you know. And this guy was incredible, you know. He was drinking, taking drugs or whatever, but he could speak French, he could speak German, he could speak Dutch and English all like perfectly. And I thought, well, like, this guy's not special you know I, I could do that I, I could do that it's okay it's not so hard and i remember i came back from the festival and i was like in the shower and i was just feeling you know a new energy wow it's like a new energy i was really really like ready to learn you know because i tried to speak french a little bit with sven and i could see my french was so bad you know 
Um, when I came back from Belgium, I started like everybody, I started to look for products, materials or ways to, to learn, you know. And that's really when I started to develop my strategies of learning and this kind of stuff, like in my listening course. And that's when I found a course by a Polish linguist that it really focused on the spoken language, like the language we use every day, you know. It's not like the typical tourist book which just has like charts of lists of verbs and lists of vocabulary you don't really learn to connect words but it was this one course i found this audio course that learned how to showed me how to connect words and make my own sentences and i really believe that's the focus of any language learner is, is focus on the 500 to 800 words that we use every single day that's really how you develop fluency in my opinion When I was working in the, in the language school, uh, one of my biggest problems that I had was that I had Brazilians arriving at the school who were complete beginners. They were not always in my class and I could see they had a lot of problems. So I started writing a little blog about just things to help Brazilian beginners get there and the blog was okay, it was very black and white, it was boring. And then I wrote a book. And that was okay, it was cool, but then I really started to become interested in, in making videos because I was inspired by different uh, teachers online to start making videos because I knew that if I make videos, my students can watch it anytime. You know, they don't need to depend on me. It was really when I started watching other YouTube teachers to get there and I wanted to help people, help more people than just the 15 people in my class. I wanted my materials to have a message to reach other people, you know. So that's how I became interested in, in making materials, making all the materials. A big part was when I tried to start a business with another guy, with a partnership. He came with an idea to make a product together and we actually worked together for one year, but we didn't agree on how to make the business. But I, in this year, I really learned a lot about how to record, how to produce, you know, how to make good online materials for students, you know. Today I can speak French, Spanish, Portuguese and Italian. Uh, my Spanish, my Portuguese is really, really fluent and my French and Italian are, are really, really good. But I, what about fluent is always about communicative fluency. You know, I'm, it's not about being absolutely like native level, it's about being able to communicate really well. So those four languages I can speak and I can communicate really, really well, you know. I think my Spanish, my Portuguese are my, my best languages, maybe my favorite languages. Uh, but when I have time, I like to speak a little bit of German, Polish, Dutch, Romanian, you know. I used to work with these people a lot in hotels. And I used to annoy them asking how to say this and how to say that. And I was always really interested, you know. But the, the big four languages are French, Spanish, Portuguese and Italian. Those are the ones that I actively practice and study. I think the best way to learn English, or maybe it's not so much about what's the best way, but we have four skills. We've got reading, writing, speaking and listening. I think listening needs to be your biggest focus. Because in my example of like, I worked in a restaurant in Barcelona speaking only Spanish and I worked really, really hard on my listening before. The difference is I was always able to understand at work. My speaking was not amazing, you know, and sometimes when I was stressed, my speaking was bad. But I, I have the philosophy that if your listening is good, then you can always communicate because you can res if you can understand, you can respond. But if your listening is bad and you can't understand, if your speaking is good, you can't respond. You know, so it's not so much about a way, but like I'm a listening like fanatic. I think every student should listen to something minimum five minutes every day of English. You know, you can't say your listening is bad if you don't actively train your listening, you know.